Nation Cafe is our own Chris Abel, and he is brought to you today by Kobo. Open up, Chris, Wildlife Photographer of the Year. Yeah, it's in its 52nd year this year. And it's a fantastic exhibit. They've been holding it at the Royal Ontario Museum for a couple of years now. And I got the chance to talk to one of the photographers behind one of the great photos. She's done a fantastic photograph of meerkats in the Kalahari Desert. It's a beautiful sort of almost Mount Rushmore of five meerkats all huddled together. You can see all their faces close together. She's working currently now as a biologist as well as a photographer in the Gorongosa National Park in Mozambique, where we connected to her just in the middle of a storm. So the connection's a little rough, but she has a fantastic story about meerkats. I took that photo a few years ago, actually, when I was an intern at the Kalahari Meerkat Project in South Africa. That photo was actually taken on my very first day on the job. And I remember being struck by how comfortable the meerkats were with us. I mean, I was down there at a wide angle lens, right in their faces, and they weren't even looking at me. And that was the first real indication that we were actually dealing with a, a really successful habituation. They stand guard, so they try to get up on a high place and look around for predators or for meerkats, you know, enemy groups. And uh, sometimes the person walking with them is actually the highest point around. And so they'll climb up your body and sit on your head. And it's really an incomparable experience to have a meerkat sitting on your head because you really just can't move until he decides to get down. Uh, It was absolutely forbidden for us to touch them with our hands, so uh, we just had to kind of sit and and wait till he decided he was done and, you know, moved along. (laughs) Meerkat sitting on your head, yep. (laughs) There we go, yeah. Uh, Now, the uh, Wildlife Photographer of the Year uh, Awards, Mm -hmm. they received 50,000 submissions from 95 countries this year. It's been going on for 52 years, and yet still... Every year, there's only a few women that are actually participating. This has been an ongoing conversation as to why, given the nature of uh, this program, it's all about animals. Why aren't there women involved? And so I asked Jen Guyton to talk about her thoughts on that. It's a really tough question, and it's something that I grapple with a lot. I actually took the time to talk to a lot of the photographers who were at the WPY award ceremony about this issue because I noticed that there were so few women among the winners. I know for me, I was a very long time to enter the Wildlife Photographer of the Year competition. This is actually my first time entering. And for many years, I just was worried that my work just wasn't good enough. And it really took encouragement from a mentor to step up and enter the competition. And it worked out well for me. I bet there are a lot of women out there who are sitting on thousands of photos they've taken over the years and are unsure what to do with them. And to them, I would say, just go for it. Just enter them into some contest. Approach an agency or a local gallery. I mean, really, what's the worst that could happen? I've actually had people reach out to me on Facebook recently, ask me to do portfolio reviews or ask me just for advice on how to get into photography. And I'm more than happy to help those people because I know how important it was for me in growing as a photographer. And you can win a camera if you share your wildlife photo and and hopefully you've got some stored on your computer using the social media hashtag ROMWPY. Do you have to win, though, to win the camera? You have to. Yes. Not just everybody who sends a picture in. <laughs> everybody who sends in a photo gets to have them put into a collection that's shared online. So we oh. get to see everybody's photographs. You get to be part of the experience. Oh, that's but they great. will select one person to win a camera. Oh, yes. that's great. Okay, i got to hear this. Because you talked to Environment Canada's David Phillips about climate change with regard Respect to Donald Trump. (laughs) Yes, he was giving a presentation on the Ontario Science Centre. He's the senior climatologist at Environment Canada. Mm -hmm. And I said, could you talk about what's happening with Mr. Climate Change is a Chinese hoax, Donald Trump? Here's what he had to say. Well, I think it's always there are setbacks. There are setbacks when we get together and sign documents and then the documents, people think we sign a document like Kyoto and then the solution is solved. I mean, my gosh, the the heavy sledding is just beginning. My sense is that this is a bigger issue than one person. I think that in the United States, yes, uh, it could be that perhaps the new uh, president-elect will see the the light and and maybe he'll have good advisors. You know, what you say in the campaign will be different what you put in practice. The other thing that I'm heartened by is that all of the progress that we've made in the United States in terms of climate change is on the local and state level. The the situation is not going to change with those 50 states. They're moving ahead. They realize that maybe we can take advantage of this. Our economy depends upon. So my sense is that 
This is maybe a little setback, we don't know, but I think it's not something that should deter us, should depress us, or I think we should move on. We know what we have to do, and we have to get on with it. I asked him, of course, for a book recommendation. He said, could I help him find a specific kind of book? Here's his description. Clouds are a perfect way of becoming a forecaster. And there are only really, when you come down to it, nine types of clouds. And so if you want to be the weather weenie of your family, become a real expert on clouds because it doesn't take very long. Now what you have to do is have pictures and you look at the clouds every day and then try and say, okay, I've got a cirrus cloud there. It was there in the morning. It's thickening there in the afternoon. Wow, that means probably in about 24 hours, we're going to get some rain or snow. And lo and behold, it happens. And you can feel like a real expert. And I did find a match from the Cloud Appreciation Society. There's the Cloud Collector's Handbook by Gavin Prater Pinney. Contains lots of photos of Canadian clouds. And because it's an ebook, you can use your Kobo reader to actually add notes as you find those clouds and collect them. Excellent. Yeah, they've got over 5 million books. We knew you'd find one. (laughs) All right. The Innovation Cafe is indeed brought to you by Kobo. This is what she said on The Jewel. Stay with us. Kobo makes it easier to access the stories you love and discover new ones in an instant. Over 5 million e-books, a personalized reading experience and points earned with every purchase. Visit Kobo.com today and open up.